This is Robert with Nomium, and we're taking a look at Typeform, which is a super-powered form and survey creator. This video is going to cover what Typeform looks like to the end user taking the survey. Then we'll take a look at creating new forms. We'll take a look at templates and how we can customize those templates. We'll take a look at building forms from scratch, how we can choose different types of questions, and how we can customize each question. Everything from what the question looks like to having images or videos appear in the questions. We'll also take a look at email responses and how we can send results to different people. And we'll quickly look at sharing type forms and results. We love to use Typeform because it's more powerful than Google Forms or SurveyMonkey, which is a survey creation platform. But a lot of companies block Google Sites by default, and Typeform isn't usually as blocked as often. It's also got a much more professional name than SurveyMonkey. We like using Typeform because before or after a program, we can get information and feedback and give instructions to our participants. But we also love to use Typeform during sessions, whether they're virtual or they're in person. Here's an example. If we have a presentation program and our friend Jason is on the stage speaking, everyone else watching Jason can complete a Typeform live on their device. And those results can go directly to Jason those results can go to me, the facilitator. Those results can go to the people responding, or the results can go to all of those people. So it's a great feedback tool that gives us immediate answers. Let's take a look first at what Typeform looks like to the end user. As you see on the screen, this is a completed Typeform, and you'll see me recreate this in just a few moments. I've uploaded our company logo for the welcome screen, and we'll get started. We can make some answers required. My name is Robert. Here's another required question. Which company are you with? I like to have people tell me their companies because if different clients are using the same type form, I can sort the results. Now, what is your partner's email? If I was watching Jason's presentation, I'm going to put in Jason's email and the questions or some of the questions that I choose will be delivered immediately to Jason. Here's an example of a basic multiple choice question. And here's another basic multiple choice question, but I have the option of adding a photo or here a video that comes with the Typeform account. basic yes or no questions. And these scales are excellent to get feedback and ranges from our participants. I'm confident giving presentations. I'm also confident with slides, but I won't be so boastful. My email. And that's our exit screen, which again, we can customize as much as we want. Now that we've seen what a basic type form looks like to the user, let's take a look at creating new forms. On the landing page, there are different workspaces. I've created this workspace demo type form specifically for this video. Now, when we want to create a new type form, we have a couple of options. If there's a previous type form we've created, it's very easy to rename or duplicate that type form. So if I've used the previous type form for one client, I might want to make a completely separate type form for another client. Now, if I do have different clients using the same type form, I can filter them by the results if I've asked people to indicate uh, which client they're with. Now, before we create a new type form from scratch, let's take a quick look at the templates because they're often very, very useful. Typeform comes with a lot of different templates and they have a lot of different purposes. We're going to take a look quickly at one of them, which is the online quote form. So first, what it does is it gives me a preview of what the end user would see when they receive my type form. So I'll get started getting my quote. 
My name is Robert. Uh, I am an academic translator. How many words does your document contain? It contains a thousand. And it gives me some different answers. Some of these have been computed with what we call a logic jump. Um, but for now, we're not going to go deep into this. We're just going to say, use this template. Now, what you'll see here on the left side is a preview of all of the questions that is built into this template. Or if it's a template that you've created, it will show you everything that you've already done. And on the right side, it gives somewhat of a preview of what the end user would see. Now, just because this is a template doesn't mean I have to stick with it. I can change really whatever I want. If I want to change this to please answer these questions, and let's say I wanted to add an image, I could use an image that comes with Typeform. So on the right side, that looks closer to what the end user would see. I can also delete any questions. And I can add a new question and I can start building like I would if I started from scratch. Now let's start a new type form from scratch. It shows us the templates again, but we can start from scratch. And this is a great way to make sure that your type form is as customized as possible, but it does take longer because you'll have to build each question. So we'll call it new type form. And we're going to start by adding our very first question. I often love the welcome screen. And I can customize this not only with Typeform's images or the icons that come with Typeform, but I can upload my own. And we often do this with our company logo. And on the right side of the screen, you can see a preview of what that's going to look like for the end user. Let's take a look at some of these question types. We might have a short text to begin with. What is your name? And at any time, we can not only edit the text and we can add or edit the images, we can also go to question settings. I would like to make this question required. Also, I, instead of adding a new question every single time, I might choose to duplicate this question, which keeps the same question settings active. Instead of what's your name, I might type what company are you with and then decide I would like to get their email. Because it's a different question type, I've added a new question, but I might want to require that to be sure that I can contact my respondents. If we go to adding new questions, anytime we want, we can get rid of those question settings if we'd like to make that more full screen. And multiple choice is a popular one. What's your favorite food? And we might choose curry, pizza, ice cream, and other. Again, if I want more multiple choices, I can duplicate that and then edit this as much as I want. What is your favorite season? And then, of course, we would need to change these answers, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Now, another cool thing that Typeform has is a video option. Let's find a video that represents the winter. Here we go. And I'm going to apply that. Now you'll see on the right side of the screen, it is slightly moving. Uh, other videos might move more, but this one is a good representation of a season, winter. Now, a few other things we can do with questions. We can choose a yes or no question. And the options are already there, yes or no. We can also choose an opinion scale, which I love because not only does it let me rate things, but it lets me customize the rating. So one thing we like to ask in our presentation programs is how confident are you 
giving presentations. Now I'm going to go back into those question settings and you'll notice that I can start the scale at one or zero, my choice. And instead of 11 steps or 10 steps, I can take it down to five. I can also show these labels. I hate presentations. And on the high side, I love presentations. And again, on the right side of the screen, this is how this is going to look to your end user. Because I often use a lot of scales, instead of adding a new one, I often will go in and duplicate that. So instead of how confident are you giving presentations, we might say how comfortable are you with slides. And again, instead of I hate presentations, we can customize that to I hate slides or I love slides. And once we're happy with that, we can close that out. If we have collected an email, which is always a good idea, not only does it give us an email that we can we can associate with their answers if we need to contact them, but it also gives us some options for what we do when the type form is complete. So let's go into email notifications. Now, this is a self notification that I, the administrator, can get when somebody completes my type form. And it also, you'll see at the bottom, gives me this text and it lets me know the type form name. So if I have multiple type forms and I can choose which answers I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I don't want an email every single time someone completes this. But this is what works really, really well. I can send a custom email to the people who complete this. Now this is good in many ways. The two big ones. Not only can I have people receive an email based on the email they gave in the type form. I can also add who they reply to if they do have a follow-up question. I can customize that message. And if I want to, I can start adding the specific questions that they answered with. So how confident are you with presentations? And I might also include how comfortable are you with slides? I can include or exclude any questions I want. Now this gives people a reminder or it gives them an email that they can bring into our live sessions or our virtual sessions and refer to any time in the program. The other great thing about these email notifications is we often use this function during our live and our virtual trainings when people are observing others. We might create a type form for feedback. We might use multiple choice. Uh, what type of presentation did they give? We might use short answer or long answer. Please describe the presentation in less than 10 words. But when we go back to those sliding scales, rate their voice, rate their body language, rate their slide design on a scale of one to five or one to 10, we can have all of those answers sent directly to the recipient, or if we've given the instructions, instead of what is your email, what is your partner's email? Now, if Jason and Jenny are partners and they're giving each other feedback presentation, Jason might type his partner's email, which would be Jenny's email, and Jenny's going to get these results. So Jason doesn't have to fill out a piece of paper. He doesn't have to hand anything to Jenny. He, simply what he puts in that type form will go immediately to Jenny's email. Now, a few other things to know about the type form is we can choose different connection options. As you see, they load here. There's a lot of different integrations. So Google Sheets, Google Analytics, Slack, Salesforce, MailChimp, and we can also add webhooks. When we're ready to share this, we would need to, well, we can go back and we can publish it, but we can 
copy this and we can send that to anyone we want. We can send it through the chat in a virtual program. We can send it over email. And when we take a look at those results, we don't have any yet for this type form. But what you'll see is we can take a look at the big picture, how people connected all devices, desktop, mobile, tablet, other. We can take a look at the summary of the results and we can take a look at responses. We can take a look at responses based on the time that it was completed and we can also export those as Excel files uh, so we can sort things that way. When we go back to create, the last step for me to do is to publish that and then my sharing link will be active.